Laura? Yes, Dad. Here I am. You very seldom get dressed for school before you have breakfast. How long have you been up? A, a while. I thought I heard you and Mother leave for the hospital just now. No, she went on ahead. You been trying to avoid us? Not really. I just didn't want to talk about my problems with Scotty, and I knew if I came down earlier, you'd want to. There's only one part of your problems I want to talk about right now, and I want to do it now. What? Your relationship with Scotty and just exactly how far it's gone. It hasn't gone anywhere. Scotty and I don't even have a relationship now that he's going to marry Bobby Spencer. All right, let's say that uh, Scotty didn't feel that he had to marry Bobby. Now, does that mean the two of you would want to go ahead with your plans, get engaged, and get married when Scotty gets out of law school? Yes. But those plans can't work out now. Laura. Right. Why don't you sit down? Now, let's just suppose that Scotty wasn't in this situation, all right? Now, does that mean that you feel ready to be able to take on all of the responsibilities and the commitment of marriage? Yes, I was. Until all of my dreams blew up in my face. Laura, marriage is not a cure-all for all individual and personal problems. It's just the opposite of that. Once two people commit to each other, the most and one of the most important parts is that they can totally give support to the other partner. How can I support Scotty when his only solution to all of this is to get married to somebody else when he doesn't even love her? Do you love him? Of course I do. He's the kindest most wonderful person I've ever known in my life. And because he's a very principled young man, he feels the best thing to do is to marry Bobby, right? And where does that leave me? Nowhere. Laura, I wish you could listen to yourself. One minute you say you're totally ready for marriage, and the next you sound like a selfish little girl. What you're trying to say is that you don't approve of my relationship with Scotty, right? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that I don't think it's right for you to be that serious right now. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's over. I have to get my books. Laura? Your mother tells me that you're aware of certain problems that she and I are having. Yes. Just what exactly do you think those problems are? I don't know, Dad. But uh, ever since Mother told all those lies to protect me, things haven't been right between you two. I hear you arguing a lot when I'm up in my room. Honey, does that um, threaten your security here at the house? It did. Till Scotty came back into my life, but now... I don't know. Laura, look, your mom and I love you very, very much. And whatever the problems, and there are some, we will work them out, and we'll work them out together. It must be nice to be that sure of things. I can be that sure because our love for each other hasn't changed. I'm glad. Look, I know how unhappy you must be because of what's happened with Scotty. I understand that, but I... I want you to know that had the two of you come to me and ask for permission, I would never have given it now. Not at this time in your life. We're finished now. Uh, I better be going. I don't want to be late for school. Gail, uh, has uh, Dr. Weber been looking for me yet? No, no, uh, Scotty, but uh, Jessie called a few minutes ago and she said that Leslie was talking to Peter and that as soon as she was finished, she'd be down here. Where are you taking off to, Brad? School. I thought you would be there, too, when I left this morning. Well, I will in a day or two when I get back from Canada. I, uh, I'll get back into the routine, you know. I wouldn't have been able to concentrate anyway. Oh, you better. Uh, Gail, remember what I said. Just call. I will. Thanks, Brian. So long, Brian. Well, 
Well, are you still planning to take off and go to Canada right away? Well, the way I see it, Gail, is the sooner that Bobby and I get married, the sooner that part of it will be over with. Can Bobby get away that quickly? Well, I stopped by Jesse's this morning, and Bobby had already called Mrs. Hardy and had to leave. She was busy packing. The worst part of it was she was excited about all of it. Well, that is probably because she still loves you, Scotty. Yeah, well, all I know is the more she talked about it, the more annoyed I got. And if that's what it's going to be like until the baby comes, yeah, I don't think that I'm going to be able to get through any of this. Well, I'll, um, I'll go down to the cafeteria and let you two have some privacy. Oh, wait a minute, Gail, wait a minute. Uh, Dr. Weber, Gail knows all about it. Lee filled her in about Laura and I getting engaged, and, uh, well, I told her the rest. Oh, well, in that case, please stay. I'd appreciate any suggestions you might have. Well, I'd like to, Leslie, but I'm afraid I really can't help very much. I mean, Scotty seems to think that the only solution is to fly to Toronto and marry Bobby as quickly as he can. That's why she called Audrey this morning and asked for an emergency leave. Yeah, yes, she did, but how did you know that? I overheard Audrey and Jesse talking about it. I also heard Jesse say that last week, Bobby had complained about feeling not well and had gone to see her family doctor. Yeah, yeah, that's who I was talking about last night, Dr. Haynes. And Bobby hasn't told Jesse about her being pregnant, so she said she wasn't feeling well so that Jesse wouldn't ask too, too many questions, I guess. I think maybe, Scotty, you're the one who should be asking some questions before you agree to marry her. Well, like what? Like, um, she has full coverage under the medical plan here. Why would she go pay an outside doctor to do a pregnancy test when she could have it done here free of charge? Well, I guess probably because she was embarrassed about her friends finding out until we were married. And this Dr. Haynes has been her family doctor since she was born. If Bobby is pregnant, and if you are the father of the child, then you have as much right as she has to see that that baby gets the best of care, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, then you should insist, I think, that she have another pregnancy test done at this hospital and have Gina do it. But, Dr. Weber, I've been all through this. When I found out Bobby was pregnant, I insisted that she set up an appointment with Dr. Haynes so that I could get the whole story from him. Well, then set up another appointment with Gina. You know her reputation, and you know that she will get the very best of care and that Gina will be the most honest with you, right? Yeah. Okay. But, well, I mean, what if Bobby won't go along with this? Then she's lying. And you better find that out right away. Either you'll find out that Bobby isn't pregnant, or if she is, then you'll be having Gina taking care of her until the baby's born. I'm calling Gina right now. Yes? Yeah, uh, Gina, um, hi, this is Scotty. Oh, hi, Scotty. What can I do for you? Well, a lot, I hope. Listen, I know uh, that it's kind of short notice, but do you have a minute? Because there's something really important that I have to talk to you about. Of course. Why don't you come by right now? Great, great. Thank you. I'll, I'll see you in a minute, okay? Here goes. Good luck. Good morning, Jesse. <laughs> what was all that about? <laughs> Nothing. I just felt like it. What is going on with you? Nothing. I, I, I feel wonderful. Nothing. Don't tell me that. I'm Jesse. Remember me? I know something's going on. It's about time you told me what it was. What makes you think something is going on? Because you're all full of secrets. Your mood changes every five minutes. And Audrey asked me a little while ago why you wanted to miss classes. I couldn't even answer her. I will tell Mrs. Hardy all about it after class today. I wish you would tell me all about it. Jesse, I've wanted to tell you about this because I feel so close to you, but I've been so afraid that something would go wrong. All right. All right. When you're ready to talk, I'm ready to listen. No, I'm ready. I'm ready. I can't hold it in anymore. <laughs> the most Good morning, Bobby. Oh. Hi, Hi Mrs. Morning, Mrs. Brewer. How's uh, Heather feeling today? Uh, terribly depressed this morning, I'm afraid. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Brewer, I would like to have a talk with Dr. Donnie, if, if I may, if she's not busy, I mean. Well, she doesn't have a scheduled appointment, I don't think. Let me check. Dr. Dante? Gina, it's Jesse. Yes, Jesse. Listen, uh, Mrs. Grant is here, and she'd love to see you if you have the time. Well, I'll, uh, I'm with someone right now. Uh, look, if she can wait, uh, I'll call you when I'm free, all right? All right, I'll tell her that. Thank you. I'm sorry, she has somebody with her, but she'll call back when she's free. Oh, thank you. Sure. No. Excuse me. <laughs> Seventh floor nurse's station, Mrs. Brewer. 
Oh, no. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling. Two nurses called in sick and going to have to redo the entire schedule for the home. Jesse, I was just about to tell you what happened. It's going to have to wait now. Jesse! I just hope that by the time I see you again, everything hasn't totally changed. So, th that's the whole story, Gina. And Dr. Weber thought it'd be a good idea for me to talk to you. Boy, I'm sorry about the predicament you're in, Scotty. Oh. I can't force Bobby to see me professionally, especially if she's under the care of her own family doctor. Yeah, I know, but Dr. Weber and Gail, they don't know anything about this Dr. Haynes that Bobby's seeing. Yeah, well, I think that's kind of strange, especially being in Bobby's financial situation, that she should go outside the hospital when all the services are available to her here. Right, right, and since I'm the one that's going to be paying the bills, I mean, don't you ever think I have a right to ask Bobby to see you? I, I don't know what to say. I'd be happy to have Bobby as a patient, but it's something that the two of you are going to have to talk out after you're married. Gina, it might be too late by then. Too late for what? Listen, I don't know how to say this, but Dr. Weber thinks that there's a chance that Bobby's lying, that she's not even pregnant at all, and she's making this all up so that I'll marry her. Oh, Scotty, no. I know, it's a rotten thing for me to say, but... See, that's why I wanted to talk to you. Scotty, I understand how you must be feeling, but what can I do? Examine Bobby. Give her a pregnancy test. If you tell me she's pregnant, then I'll really believe it. What if she doesn't want to come and see me? Well, she'll have to, because I am not going to marry Bobby until I find out whether she's telling the truth. And I'm going to insist that she sees you sometime today. So if you can please find time to see her, and can you rush her test through just as soon as possible? Wait a minute. Uh, I'm sorry, Gail. I didn't mean to interrupt anything. It's just that Dr. Weber was in with the patient. I had to talk to someone. Well, that's all right. What, what is it? Well, I saw Gina, and she said that she would see Bobby. God! Yeah, except now, how am I going to convince Bobby to let Gina examine her? Well, you just have to be very firm about it. I mean, if, if Bobby has nothing to hide, then she should be very happy to see a competent doctor like Gina. Yeah, but she's going to think that I don't believe her. Well, that is not so far from the truth, is it? No, I guess it's not. Scotty, you know, you couldn't be dishonest, even if you tried. So why don't you just tell Bobby how you feel? You can also tell her, well, that as the baby's father, you want to make sure that Bobby has the best care possible. Yeah, you're right. I mean, then if she really is pregnant, I'd rather have her seeing Gina than some other doctor that I don't know anything about. Of course. And you better talk to Bobby about it right away. Okay. As a matter of fact, uh, your opportunity's right here. Scotty, I'm all packed and I'm ready to go. Listen, Bobby, there's I've something I want... I've never been to Canada before, so I stopped at my travel agent and I got some folders all about Toronto and it looks so beautiful there. But it's really cold, so you be sure and pack a lot of warm things. Bobby, listen, I don't want a weather report. I want to talk to you. Okay. You know, Luke was really disappointed when I told him we were getting married in Canada. He really wanted to give me away, so we'll have to remember to send him a postcard, okay? What time are we leaving? Bobby, we may not be going now. Why? I want you to see Gina Dante today. I am very satisfied with Dr. Haynes. He brought all of us Spencers into the world, and I trust him completely, and I have no intention of changing doctors at this point. Bobby, since I am the one who is paying the bills, I think I have the right to ask you to go see Gina. I'm the one who has to have the baby. Listen, Bobby, I'm going to lay it right on the line. I want you to start right from the beginning. The pregnancy test, the whole what? thing... Scotty, I already had those tests, and you heard the results yourself from Dr. Haynes. And I want to hear it from a specialist, Dr. Dante. I mean, she's a wonderful doctor, and I think you should have the very best care available anyway. Where's this coming from all of a sudden? Listen, Bobby, I spoke to Gina, and she said that she would see you as a favor to both of us. Well, tell her not to hold her breath, because I'm not going. Yeah, well, before you decide that, I think you ought to know that I've made a decision, too. Either you talk to Gina today, or you can just forget about getting married. Now the rest of it is up to you.